Yeah. And I think we're, and also I think one of the things that's going on, this is one of the things that's empowered the women's movement and empowered a lot of other movements is access to information. Correct. It's radical. It's happening so fast and it's it's inundating us and we have to catch up to it. It's like it's happening so goddamn quickly that we're just trying to, okay, what, what, what is okay now? What's not okay now? What can we do? What can we not do? Right. And access to each other. Yeah. Like never before have 10 women all assaulted by the same man been able right. to meet each other. Right. Well, how else would we run into it? The grocery exactly. store? Hey, were you assaulted by that guy by any chance? Like we're able to find each other online. Jamie, were you talking about Steve Carell in the office? Was it you that was talking about that? Yeah. What the, about? What, what, you watched the old episodes of The Office, which is not that long ago. Yeah. He was such a creep. <laughs> and that, like, you, yeah. could, you can't really do <laughs> that today. That's amazing. But we, he was kind of like bumbling. Yeah. You know, like silly, I didn't watch hapless. the show. So what was the difference? Like, it was, uh, I think, the purse episode where a girl shows up to sell purses and he's just like makes a big to do. Just like, you, you can have the conference room. And guess what? I just got this espresso maker. Don't make me give it to you because I won't. Oh, and you need a ride home? I give you a ride home. But did sure? it feel like, creepy or did that, it the feel... The ride home thing was a very particular creepy thing based off today's like world. Right. Sure. And I think that like, I mean, the, and what I know about the English version, I don't know what the intention was for the American version. The idea was to make him kind of polarizing and un- make it's, it makes you uncomfortable and he, you know... It's crazy that it wasn't that long ago. Yeah. It wasn't like... But it's like, you know, it's like, you know, it's interesting because so much of this is... is almost it's because it's so intangible it's hard to explain and I think this is why a lot of guys are getting annoyed because when you get granular about it 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 makes us seem like we're just being crazy because so it's like you hug me at the comedy store and it feels different than when um, let's call him Joe Blow hugs me there's just something creepy about Joe Blow and there's something not creepy about you and I can't explain it and I can't tell you why and I sound crazy and manic and histrionic no that doesn't sound because that's the same way with gay guys there's certain gay guys that hug me where it's creepy there's certain gay guys that hug me. I don't want to out anybody, but there's certain guys that hug me. I'm like, what's up? I yeah. give them a hug, and it's all just warm and friendly, yep. and it's cool. It doesn't matter if they're gay or not. But then there's other guys that they they hang on to me a little, or they'll squeeze my back a little, and it just get, there's a little little extra going on. I'm like, okay, and okay. I th- and, to, and I think that that's what like females are kind of trying to s- sort of say with the more granular stuff and with the Aziz story and stuff. It's like I know it sounds like I'm being crazy, but I promise there's something fucking creepy about it. And I know that I don't have proof and I don't have photo evidence, but I'm I but and the more I talk about it, the crazier I sound. But I think that that um, is just making me the Steve Carell thing is making me think it's like a hug that lasts a little too long. I had a guy once in an office. Right. But don't you think the Aziz story is like, like, you don't have to try to tank a guy's life Mm -hmm. from a bad date. It seems like you both ate, ate each other out, went down on each other. And it's like it sounds like it sucked. But then you're anonymous, and then you're you're 22 or 23. Like mm-hmm. this is like poor judgment. And here's the thing: and cruelty. I'll, There's a lot of cruelty involved. Too. Like somebody r- described it as revenge porn. And that's for, it, for women, yeah, it's our yeah. version of revenge porn. But it's just like, look, this is not these are not comparable crimes to like what we've been discussing. And I don't know if, and I can't speak to saying who's guilty and all that sort of. I, I just, don't, I, I don't I know don't, what happened. I don't I just think know there's enough described. information, but I don't think that that this person is coming forward equating it to rape. I think women know that there's different echelons. There's rape, but there's sexual harassment. But they call it sexual assault. Assault. I mean, look, I don't know enough about it. I don't know enough about it either. And none of us were there. But, like, I do know in my 20s, I'm um, not saying he's guilty again, I don't know, but in my 20s, I had a lot of sex that I felt I was coerced into that was transactional sex that I didn't want to have. You know, and this is something we talk about in the female brain movie is that men are less able to read cues, emotional cues on on faces than women are. Um, I'm How does not, that work? So apparent. So we have evolved to cry four times more easily because men have a harder time reading um, emotional cues on faces. Whoa, that's why women cry easier. That's why we cry easier because men are designed to sort of like see movement and to hunt and to right. You're not designed to sort of read like, oh, is she frustrated or angry? You know, like have you ever been on a double mm-hmm. date with your wife? Wife, and like um, you think that her and the other I can't imagine you on a double date that was so weird thinking about it <laughs> I've done those things really <laughs> in the very early <laughs> stages no, I've, done them, I've done them recently but they, if you ever like get annoying yeah and you go on a double date and like you have to fucking talk to the guy and he's asking you a million questions about hunting and you're like just listen to my podcast why do I have to fucking do this for free and then your <laughs> wife is talking to the other girl and you think it's going well and the girl gets the car and you're like well, that went well and you're like she was such a bitch I couldn't fucking stand her and you're like it seemed like you guys got along great you know like has that ever happened to you my wife's not like that okay she's pretty pretty she's just like has had it yeah. um she just talks i mean she's not like if she if she thought something was bad she would let everybody know like right away well she would just 
it'd be obvious. Or just just sort of like sometimes there's like um, basically and we talk about it in the movie is like is just men are not um, as good at reading emotions on faces. So it's like mm. if you were to say like Whitney, how are you? And I was like, I'm fine. You might just be like, OK, she's fine. Let's move on. A lot of guys can't understand that there's a discrepancy between what I'm saying and how I'm saying it. And mm. it's like about just reading like how muscles move on, on human faces. So it's like you can look up um, sort of the difference. And, you know, so I'm not defending men in that area. I think that that an interesting conversation that might come up at some point is people who have autism are really going to be fucked in all of this. Ooh. People who can't pick up on social cues because right. so much of this is nonverbal. Yeah. I fear that we're going to get to a place where we're going to have to like sign contracts and shit before we have sex and stuff because, uh, you know, I I know that in my 20s and I'm freezing up just talking about it um, is that when men made physical advances to me, I would be giving off these nonverbal cues um, and I wasn't saying no, but my body was saying no. And I'm not saying it's necessarily a guy is supposed to like be able to read my body language. But that's what was happening because I froze up because of my trauma response. Right. And I was scared. And also we are conditioned to be submissive to men. Um, I am conditioned to feel shame if I don't fuck a guy in a certain amount of time. What? I spent wait a, lot a minute. Totally. Wait a minute. I thought it was the opposite. I thought you would feel shame if you fucked a guy too quickly. If you fuck a guy on the first date, you feel shame. But if you there's this sort of like unspoken rule that you like kind of have to fuck a guy on the third date. What? Yeah. Oh, totally. Am I? Do you not think that? Jamie's never heard of this oh, either. Oh, yeah. I feel like guilt and shame and I'm difficult and I'm a prude and I'm like whatever. This might just be you. Yeah, this might just be me. <laughs> but like every I mean, every girl that I know that I maybe it's just my generation or something. Every and, guy out there is like, all I got to do is just get three dates in and we're in. But think about all think about <laughs> negotiate. So just the just the tip is like something we joke about, right? Mm -hmm. But it is based in the idea of negotiating for sex. So if someone is starting to say just the tip, that means I've already said no. And you're like, well, come on, how about just a blowjob? And then I'm like, no, just come on, just the tip. It's like we joke about it, but that means that a negotiation is going on mm -hmm. and that I've already said no. And then you just get worn down. And that's like transactional sex, which I think women are kind of just, I won't generalize about all women, um, but I think some women are like sort of like, I don't want to have that kind of transactional sex anymore. Mm. And like, like, I feel like I'm being used as a blow up doll. And I think from what I understand that girl felt is she felt like she was like rushed through dinner and like went back and was just sort of expected to mm. be fucked. And right. I think a lot of what's happening is that men were promised something from porn and women were promised something from romantic comedies. Men were promised that women like want it all the time. And women have been promised that men like want to talk to us and i think these expectations are clashing so i think it's a little bit of nature and a little bit of nurture so a lot of it being media misrepresentations of actual relationships and that's the models that people are acting on maybe yeah hmm. i think it's different for every person because every person has a different experience with sex everyone right. has a different ability to read faces everyone has a different nature and nurture everyone had different fucking parenting and then there's a problem with like sometimes you really shouldn't be with that person and you're yeah. there yeah. And you're there. And what do you do? What do you do? I mean, <laughs> what do you I, do? I've literally had sex before just to like get out of there. <laughs> <laughs> you're just like, oh, God, I don't want to argue with this person right now. But I feel like this person feels entitled to my body and I feel Whoa. shame and I'm embarrassed. And like it's just all this stuff that's really kind of hard to explain. And I think it probably is annoying to the guy. And I just like I don't want to be difficult. And I've been so gaslit to believe that I'm difficult. It just gets like really messy. And then by the time you figure it out, you've already had sex. And you're just like, oh, fuck, can I have my parking? Pass back. <sighs> Isn't this part of just being a human and trying to navigate your way through the fucking treacherous waters of uh, just social interactions, yes, sexual and I interactions? I didn't figure it out until I was 32 years old. I wasn't able to like articulate or figure out whether I actually wanted to be having sex or not. So, like, my advice to all my guy friends is do not have sex with girls that are under 30 because, like, I could not, I didn't have the ability to even know or say what I wanted until I was But like for men, a lot of men feel like if you have sex with a girl who's under 30, then it's fun and you can have fun. But if you have sex with a girl who's over 30, their she biological clock is and ticking. Maybe. And I froze my eggs. I have good time. <laughs> my shit's on ice. pressuring you into this, you know, relationship very quickly. What's your intentions? Where is this going? I yeah. want to know what we, how we stand. What Block are that we? bitch. Mm. Block her. Find another one. There's Tinder. You can find plenty of women like in their her? 30s. What if you like her? You just want her to calm down. You just want to go, let's work this out. I mean, look, have, you're, we're going to have to, like, start talking to each other, I guess, and, like, setting Ooh. expectations. I know. That sounds like a nightmare, oh. doesn't it? <laughs>